Hopefully no sharks out here. That's the main thing we want to avoid. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Got this bag behind me. That is a stand-up paddleboard, an inflatable one, so I gotta inflate it and get it set up. And then we're gonna head out and try to go catch some rockfish, hopefully a link cod. If I can catch a link cod, that'll be a successful day. So anyways, got a little bit of setup going on. Gotta get up the cameras, gotta get this board ready to go. And then we'll get out there and try to catch some fish. Let's see out there. I also met this dog today. I assume he's probably one of these guys that's surfing out here, one of their dogs. Um, but extremely friendly. Looks like he's gonna help me set this thing up. That should be good. All right, one more just for good measure. Hello. So here's the vessel for today. Normally I'm on a big fancy kayak today. We're just on a, uh, basically a big balloon. This is a 10 and a half foot inflatable stand up paddle board. Got the paddle, the vessel. All right, let's see how this goes. too bad all right so I leashed my camera but I didn't leash my rod so the rods the one thing that I need to make sure it doesn't fall in but um, yeah we're paddling out as you can see well maybe you can't see I don't know if the GoPro is picking it up but there's a kelp bed to my right here there's also another kelp bed off in the distance to my left I'm just kind of paddling straight down the middle here. Um, so I got to believe that right in the middle here is sand. And then where these kelp beds are, that should be rock. Uh, because in order for kelp to grow, it needs some rocks to latch onto. Um, so the rock is our kind of where we're going to try and target. I think we're going for rockfish today. There could be halibut out here too. But main target today is rockfish. And hey, if a halibut comes along, I'll definitely take it, but I think we got a better chance of going for link cod. Link cod is my main target. You'll see what baits I'm using here. More designed for link cod. Hopefully no sharks out here. That's the main thing we want to avoid. Hey, maybe there'll be some sea bass on the edge of these kelp lines. Who knows? Could be anything out here. there's any ling cod down there they should definitely hit this I think this is a one and a half ounce jig head just on a cheap little travel rod I didn't want to bring anything fancy out here because I don't know I feel like the chances of me losing something are fairly fairly high oh shoot I think that's fish The drag's not performing very well. What is this? Oh yeah, that's fish. That's a fish. 
Got this kind of cheap setup, so the drag's not super great on this. Come on up. Uh, oh, little ling. Hey, hey, first fish on the paddleboard. Look at that. Nice looking ling. Unfortunately, it's a little bit tiny, but probably like a 12 inch, 14 inch ling. I told you, even the smallings will go after this big swim bait. First fish on the paddleboard. Quick release. Oh, that's a bite. Oh, I missed him. Oh, dang it. Drop it back down, drop it back down. Oh man, that was definitely a bite though. Probably a small ling if I had to guess. Probably just had the tail of the bait. That's why I didn't get hooked. All right, you know what? We're gonna try going outside of this kelp a little bit. Who knows, maybe there'll be a halibut, but most likely there's more rocks out here. Maybe some more bigger lings out in the open water. Oh yeah, that's good. That's gotta be a ling. It's either a ling or a good sized rockfish. Oh, look at that, it's towing me. Oh yeah, nice ling. Okay, I didn't bring a, a net or a gaff or anything. I just brought a stringer. So, hold on. So here's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to get him right onto the stringer. Got him, look at that. Okay, so I marked on my rod where 22 inches is, which is the minimum size for a ling cod. And if it's even close to that, oh, that's like right on. Yeah, it's right at about 22 inches, so I'm gonna let him go. Take him off the stringer right now. So I think he's a keeper. He's right on that mark where I marked 22 inches. Yeah, I think he's he's probably like 24, but that's okay. It's it's a little bit too close for me to call. If it was like one inch bigger, I'd probably keep him. And uh, I'm honestly, I'm pretty confident. I'm like 98% sure that it's a keeper, but unless I'm 100, I don't want to keep him. So we'll let this one go. Still a really fun fish on out in the middle of nowhere on a little stand-up paddleboard. So quick release. There he goes. Fun fight. All right, so let me show you what we're using here to catch these fish. I have a really cheap, I think this is like an eight foot travel rod. I really wouldn't recommend it if you're doing any serious fishing, but if you're doing something where you don't mind losing a rod or maybe you're going on vacation and you know you just wanna bring a rod to throw in here and there, um, then yeah, maybe go for it. I think it's like $30 on Amazon, super cheap. And then I also have a, another cheap Cast King 4000 reel. Um, yeah, I think this is probably another $20, $30. Like I said earlier, there's a good chance that something goes wrong out here today. I've never done this before, so that's why I brought this cheap setup. And really for lingcod, rockfish, even halibut, you don't need anything that fancy. It's not like they're gonna test your gear, you know, put your gear to the test. So uh, something like this really is perfectly fine. And obviously you saw I caught two fish already, not, no problems. Um, I have a 20 pound braid, main line. I think it's 20, either 15 or 20, I don't remember. And then I have it tied to a swivel right there. Just a regular little barrel swivel. And then a 40 pound mono leader um, tied to this jig head. And I have this mono leader. One, it helps with visibility. It's not as visible in the water, um, but mainly just for abrasion resistance. So 
for a rockfish, lingcod, stuff like that. We're bouncing around in these rocks. You know, it can go down into a crevice that's five, even, you know, deep or even more. Um, so this line right here is gonna be rubbing all against the rocks. And you don't want your braid to be rubbing against the rocks because the braid is not very abrasion resistant. Mono and fluoro, much better for abrasion resistance. Um, so that's why I have that on there. Um, really, it's, you know, not, nothing for the fish, just more for the abrasion. Um, and then at the business end, right at the end, I have a one and a half ounce jig head uh, with a big hammer. I think that's a six inch swim bait, just a regular old anchovy color, white on the bottom, black on top, just a real natural color. Um, and yeah, I'm just casting it along this kelp bed here. Here we'll get it cast in, letting it sink to the bottom um, where these lingcod and rockfish, most of the lingcod and rockfish are gonna be hanging out right on the ocean floor. So I let it sink to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. Let it go, let it go. And then when it hits the bottom, around the bottom there, you just start reeling slowly. Right along the bottom of the ocean. Right on top of those rocks over there. And then when I think it's got too high, I'll let it go. I'll either flip the bale or let it just sink on its own, either way. Back on the bottom and now start reeling in. There's fish. Got him. Right on cue. Feels like another maybe a ling, small ling. Something good. Ooh, oh there we go. Maybe it's a little bigger. Drag peeler. Okay, maybe we're in a good spot here. See what we got this time. Yep, yeah, another ling, a little bit smaller. Definitely undersized this time, but a nice blue ling cod. These ling cod, if you're not familiar with West Coast fishing, uh, these are kind of like an apex predator down there. Some of them are really blue. This is maybe like halfway blue. I've seen even more blue than this, which is kind of weird looking if you've never seen them before. But it's perfectly normal. I'd say probably 30 to 40 percent of the fish that you catch are. You know, have at least some blue to them. Like I said, some of them are even as blue, like maybe even more blue than this kayak, I would say. Um, but this one, you can see it's got a little bit of blue. The flesh, once you fillet it up, is also blue, which is kind of weird. People never seen it before. They think it's like poisoned or something. But uh, once you cook it, it actually just turns back to a quick release there. It turns back to a regular flesh color like any other fish, white, white fish. Um, so yeah. But yeah, like I said, I think I'm in a good spot here. So let's. Let's get back in and see if we can get a keeper here. So the nice thing about this paddle board is I can carry it to places that most, I mean, it, you could get a kayak to where I launched today, but it would take extreme difficulty. And um, obviously boats can get here. You've probably seen a few in this video already, but oh, there's a fish. Stay on there, stay on there. Um, what are they saying? Yeah, boats can get here, but the portability of this paddleboard, um, you know, is a lot nicer than the kayak, especially my motored kayaks. That thing is like, a tank hauling it around. It would be extremely difficult to get here, even with two people, let alone by myself. Another nice ling. Honestly, that's probably another keeper, but I think he's probably right at 22, so we'll just give him a quick release. This little spot that I'm in, I've had, I caught two, or I caught three now actually. Had one come off, nice little hole. Let's see if there's a big one down there. Anyways, another nice fish there, quick release. All right, let's cast back in, see if we can get another one. This little spot right here seems to be holding some fish. Oh yeah, that was a good bite. I felt that one. Another Ling. Ling City. This is like the fifth one out of this little hole here. 
fortunately they're all kind of small but I forgot how many I've caught I think that's number six five or six tearing up my swim bait a little bit look at that swim bait it's all got gigantic teeth marks but I think we can get another one out of it We're out of battery. Well guys, this is a fun little video. No fish finder, no GPS, barely, I'm basically fishing on a piece of, on a balloon. A thicker, a thick walled balloon is basically what this is. So it was fun. It's fun to get back out here and kind of, I don't know, you feel, when you catch fish like this, you really feel like you're out here in, in nature or whatever with the fish. Feel like you I don't know it's more of a level playing field I guess when you're on a boat or a kayak it's almost like cheating not that it's easy it's still hard to catch fish no matter where you are but this way it's like even the small ones are fun to catch this way I'll put it that way so anyways let me know what you guys thought of this video if you liked it let me know and I'd be happy to do it again this was a lot of fun um, a little bit something different for me so anyways that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. All right, guys. I literally just dropped it in We're one time on my way in. One time dropped it in bang uh, this is like probably the biggest one I got actually I think that's a grassy, grass rock fish. That's huge though. That's probably the biggest grassy I've ever caught. Dude, that's a huge grassy. It's probably like 18 inches, something like that. These ones live in the kelp. That's why you know, I'm right, I'm pretty close to shore, probably within 100 yards, maybe 100 yards or so of the shore. Huge. All right, that's gonna wrap it up. I think it's probably like three pounds. Two, three pounds. 